Okay, well, it's a couple of minutes past the hour, so I guess we'll get started. Welcome to the With Open It's Possible, the 2023 Open Ed Virtual Conference hosted by Texas Tech University Libraries. We want to make this a welcoming space, uh, so any form of harassment will not be tolerated and may result in removal from the virtual conference. As a courtesy to our speakers, please keep yourself muted, and we encourage you to turn off your video during the presentation. The session is being recorded and will be posted on the library's YouTube channel after the conference is completed. Closed captioning has also been enabled. Um, I'm going to post a link in the chat box here. Um, to the Open Education Week conference. And you get that in there for you. And there's the link. This link will take you to the conference homepage where you'll find a brief description of the conference, presentation schedule of the week, and information about our keynote speaker. Please use the chat feature to submit questions at any time. I'll be monitor monitoring the questions as they come in and ask them to the presenters during the Q&A portion of the presentation. If you'd like to ask a question anonymously, please chat with me directly and make sure to indicate that this is an anonymous question. You're welcome to turn on your camera and verbally ask the question during the Q&A portion of the session. So now I'd like to introduce our presenters for the session, um, Reaching New Student Populations by Using Open Educational Resources and Building Personal Connections in Asynchronous Distance Classes, Recent Experiences in the French Program at Angelo State University. And joining us this morning are Dr. Elizabeth Christine Moosh, who is Professor and Film Studies Chair in the Department of English and Modern Languages at Angelo State University, and Dr. Karen Cody, who is Professor in the Department of English and Modern Languages at ASU. And we're glad to have them here with us this morning. Uh, welcome. And um, the floor is yours. Thank well, you. thank you so much, Brian, for this very kind introduction. We would like to thank Brian and also Sabrina Davis, who have facilitated and given us the possibility to talk about our French program here at ASU. And we're, of course, also very grateful for um, Texas Tech giving us the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, French here um, on Angelo State University's campus. And we are, of course, also part of the Texas Tech system. So um, without further ado, I would just like to go and start off, give you a little introduction about what we're going to do today. And then, of course, after you have the opportunity to um, ask questions and um, uh, Brian uh, has volunteered to put our links into the chat, though that way you can look at some of the stuff we are doing here. Okay, so over the last 10 years or so, Karen Cody and I have been using the Open Educational Resource Francais Interactif, uh, and we have used that in all of our four lower division French courses. Pensee Interactive was developed at UT Austin roughly 20 years ago. Initially, these free materials were conceptualized for the face-to-face -face classroom, and that was also the way we used it. And then uh, our students were really very successful in building the communicative, communicative proficiency necessary to fill the foreign language requirement for their BA degrees. Then when COVID hit, Angelo State moved uh, all classes online like many other universities did too. And we went to teaching French online in synchronous mode. 
uh, Francais Interactive proved to be remarkably adaptable to that. And we were able to maintain the personal connection with our students. Post COVID, Angelo State decided to increase its online enrollment uh, course offerings uh, online, not only in French, but for us. Um, that meant that our lower division French courses were now moved uh, all online. And we were teaching, we began teaching them primarily as eight week intensive asynchronous classes. And we have one uh, trailer course, a 16 week asynchronous uh, online class that is offered in the spring. The challenge has been to keep students engaged to assure, to assure the continuous development of communicative proficiency in an asynchronous setting. So Karen Cody will now give a brief introduction to the open educational resource Francais Interactif. She was majorly involved in the initial development of these educational materials that are now in their fourth edition. And thereafter, I will present the different strategies we have implemented in our asynchronous online classes to keep the personal connection with our students that is really so important for active learning and the retention of students in our foreign language programs. So one of the most striking things we found was providing access to a quality open educational resource kept students more engaged in daily work than was the case in other foreign language online classes which used uh, materials sold by a commercial vendor. So there were no excuses such as, I don't have the money to purchase the book or to gain access to the website right now. So there was really no delay for them to um, begin their work, right? And uh, also using Francais Interactive also eliminated uh, a lot of technological problems and hurdles that uh, uh, arose when using a commercial publisher. So I'm now gonna um, open up our PowerPoint presentation and uh, my colleague Karen Cody will talk about false interactive. I'm gonna share my screen, so bear with me here. Um, and so just a second. Ah, sorry. Do you see our screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, perfect. You tell me when we want the links to be open, please. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, at first, uh, well, and again, I want to express my sincere gratitude uh, for this opportunity to, to talk about open educational resources but specifically with language learning, uh, because I am one of the faculty members who uh, also teaches uh, another language using some of the commercially available uh, products, which are uh, remarkably more expensive. And this semester in particular, we've, we've been experiencing a number of technology difficulties. So uh, I'm, I'm really grateful for this opportunity to share um, Francais Interactif. Here is kind of the, the, the opening slide uh, that gives you a sense of some of the things that I'm going to be talking about. Iconic images, uh, but also very real people, uh, uh, students that are going to be uh, a part of the materials. And there in the small print in, in the left-hand side, it really talks about the creation of Francais Interactif uh, um, being web-based, uh, going back really to uh, uh, 2004, when Francais Interactif 
deployed, uh, but we were working already on uh, an, in, um, uh, an instructional grammar website that wound up being rolled into this in early 2000. So uh, this is a long time project that has been very, very successful. So here's a great slide that y'all can explore. Uh, but do, how about if we, um, do you wanna go to the Coral thing? I just, yeah. Here's the Coral website. Um, and it was, it's the kind of foundation of everything. Um, Coral is the center for open, it, I, I'll keep talking while Christine is finding it. The center, and I'm sure that this uh, address is also being shared in the chat. Okay, it, can I briefly interrupt you? Sure. I just wanna make sure everybody sees that new share. The Center for Open Educational Resources in Language Learning. Yes. Can see? Okay, yes. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, federally funded uh, website. You can tell just at the top with all of the tabs, it's a remarkable resource. Uh, uh, but the Francais Interactif is part of the materials. Uh, it was part of what was created here but they continue to be very active with all kinds of seminars and new products. Uh, you can see some of the featured publications, uh, but it's a, an extraordinary resource uh, for um, graduate students. I've taken graduate students there for different things, uh, but also there is um, uh, uh, another um, uh, feature here, which is uh, the, the teaching methodology class. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. So how about if we go to the next website on that mm -hmm. screen? This one? Sure, yeah, that would be great. Uh, so this is the front page of the textbook that is available that goes with the web-based Francais Interactif course. And you can see from the photos that they're really, these, these were students, uh, uh, UT students that went for a summer study abroad, uh, but they're, they're really um, to uh, get the students who are taking our courses now to connect with someone similar to them. But you can kind of get a feel for all of this. This textbook is available free, uh, downloadable but you can also pay, didn't you say it was $30 now mm -hmm. and get a bound uh, copy of it. So it is readily available as opposed to $120 per semester that my Spanish students are paying for their uh, access to a virtual, to, to their website and textbook. Excellent, just wanted you to see that one. And then the next uh, click, there you go. So this is the, the home page of Francais Interactif. There you can see where to get the textbook. There you can see the chapter index. And there you can see Texas French grammar, uh, which really was the, the foundation of all of this. Uh, and I, I want to uh, talk a little bit about why this is an extraordinary uh, website. Um, uh, it, it was developed. Uh, uh, it has changed the student learning experience with a very user-friendly pedagogical material. You're going to see that cultural information is embedded in the content, in particular the video content, and uh, real language, not fake language, not classroom language, real French language uh, is captured uh, spontaneously in video interviews. And this concept of it being video is also important. For example, in that expensive Spanish textbook, the students can never actually see the Spanish speakers produce. And it is incredible how much information we get by watching someone's lips produce uh, the sounds. The innovations of Francais Interactif include a real emphasis on vocabulary. I'm going to talk about uh, that in different ways. Grammar taught with a focus both on form and on meaning from input, getting native input 
processing that to output on the part of the student. Use of non-native speakers, these students, but also children as language models. Uh, uh, and this was really quite innovative. Okay. Next slide. Uh, the, ped the pedagogical sequence for vocabulary learning within all of this moves the learner from input to output, from decontextualized words to words in context. Um, uh, the students are going to be introduced to vocabulary several times. Uh, both in writing and orally before they are ever asked to produce this. And this allows the, the learner to feel comf comfortable and confident in their journey. And we have seen that with the kinds of interactions that our students tend to have with these materials. Um, the uh, 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 principles of processing instruction, this is input, uh, oriented approach to grammar uh, and to the teaching of vocabulary. So uh, there's, there's a system to using all of this. I'm gonna go through uh, one of the other um, slides here to kind of break down exactly what's going on. But one of the things that's critical about this particular approach is learners have to understand the meaning of the words for them to be able to perform the communicative activities uh, uh, that are not only on this website, but are also paralleled in uh, activities in the textbook. Um, all of this um, follows very much the methodology that is outlined and available uh, again, on that CoWorl website, there's a foreign language teaching methods course. And that focuses on best practices for foreign language instruction. Um, and um, uh, it, it is quite a complete course. It's not brand new, but it is still absolutely valid. And this is just kind of the personification. This is the uh, uh, proceduralization of what's got to happen in the brain when you are dealing with uh, communicative competence. Okay, how about if we go to that next slide? Oh, yeah, so we've talked about the pros of open educational resource. Yep, 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 Christine covered that really well. Okay, so here's the really um, uh, fascinating thing about this, these particular materials. They are very user-friendly. The culture is embedded in them. Real language is embedded, again, not pedagogical language. It is very learner-centered. The student is active in the entire process. And Christine is gonna talk specifically about how we have captured that interaction that normally happened in a face-to-face -face classroom or even in a synchronous classroom like we did during COVID, but how we're having to accommodate that interaction. The emphasis is on vocabulary, but the grammar um, uh, is on the form, the, the rules of the grammar, but also the meaning of it and putting those together. Knowledge plus skills, we say, in a cultural context, that's what leads to communicative language proficiency. So there you've got a whole philosophy <laughs> in a slide. Good, thanks, next slide. Okay, uh, this uh, lexical approach uh, that we were talking about uh, is, is really, uh, uh, how the vocabulary uh, gets, gets uh, presented before the students have to interact with it, and certainly before they have to produce it. There's this logical progression with increasing contextualization, a focus on the form, particularly the grammatical form, and these receptive skills build to controlled output. So 
that's another slide that kind of um, does all of that. Yes. So let's let's get into what we look at here. So hopefully, yeah. Everybody sees Français Interactive Chapter Two. Yes. Thank Excellent. You. Yay! 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 Okay. So I've given you the background on this. I, my uh, French one students have just completed this because I'm doing the uh, uh, the 16 week trailer course, and uh, I want you to see that this is the type of the matière. Christine will share hers for Chapitre 9, Chapter Nine here shortly. But all of them are set up the same. You see down at the bottom is where they can print off the pages that are relevant to that. But uh, uh, the um, uh, 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 introduction up at the top, uh, that little video, uh, and uh, it, it's, it's a little active thing up there at the introduction. Right. So uh, and, and you don't have to you, you don't have to click it, but that but that's what it's going to be. Uh, that introduces the communicative function. One of the great things about uh, the organization of this is it's kind of in contextualized units. So the vocabulary all has a theme and then the, the, the grammar that is being used with that vocabulary is for them to accomplish particular learning objectives. The learning objectives are all listed for the chapters so uh, that can be shared uh, uh, with the students as well. But uh, you, the, um, it's one of the uh, uh, UT students who does these introductions on site somewhere around Lyon um, uh, during their study abroad thing. So the students, our students get to see a student uh, uh, on site and they can imagine themselves there. The least of vocabulary, you've got a native speaker who is pronouncing these words in isolation. Uh, but the other thing that I appreciate so much about it, there, there's that PDF there uh, that uh, has kind of a little guide that makes the students pay attention to what they need to pay attention to in order to really get what they need to get, to be able to recall, to remember what they need to remember, notice what they need to notice. So um, uh, 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 that is a real helpful thing. And then in conjunction with that. Hey, I'm gonna go. Yeah, in conjunction with that in the top right-hand corner are the videos where you've got native speakers who are using this same vocabulary, but in context. Uh, again, this is very much part of the plan, words in isolation, words in context, but not only is that critical for getting, getting the vocabulary words, but for French, it's for the pronunciation. So the pronunciation rules really kick in when you've got phrases and sentences. So you've got those videos on, on context uh, where you've got those words. Then underneath are videos both with native French speakers and with UT students where they are using them in a conversational kind of manner. Interactif, interaction, it's question and answer. So those videos are absolutely key for our students to see how to use these in a typical situation. Question and answer. Um, uh, Christina is gonna show uh, quite a number of things with that. The phonétique that is there on the left underneath all of the vocabulaire, uh, the phonétique of French is, is, is uh, not as simple as, as la phonética in Spanish. Uh, but all of these rules are gradually presented. What is great is each chapter, the rule that is being presented uh, about how to pronounce something also uses the vocabulary from that chapter. Then um, in addition to these things that are available online, there are also activities that go along with these in the textbook. 
the actual grammar itself underneath there is where all of the rules are about the um, uh, from the most basic to more and more complex about how to use these vocabulary words in sentences. And this grammar is um, uh, explained in English with, um, again, all kinds of pronunciation with little dialogues that exemplify. They're supposed to be funny. They're supposed to be cute. Um, and then there's some practice exercises there that are self-graded. So the students know whether they are getting the grammatical point or not. Uh, and then all of that then feeds into uh, those um, uh, interviews as well. The other two things that I appreciate very much uh, about Trance Interactif are the uh, uh, internet activities and the chansons, the songs. Uh, these are um, not pedagogical uh, 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 creations. The, this is real language. These are real websites created in French for French people. But by using the PDFs that go with them, that kind of bridges for our students, regardless of their level, how they can make sense out of actual real French. Again, not classroom French. So the ensemble really does build from chapter to chapter to chapter uh, in very real ways for all kinds of learners. Um, um, uh, who can build their proficiency? Um, Christine is going to give you some more specific ways of uh, how we've been using these in our classrooms. This is what I just finished Chapitre 2 with the French 1. She's going to be showing you a more advanced class. But this is, this is, these are the underpinnings. These are the intent of uh, what it is that she's going to be sharing on how we actually deploy all of this. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. So I will be moving on here with um, how we transition from face-to-face -face classes to asynchronous online class um, because of is it is, as we mentioned previously, it's really important to keep this personal contact. It really um, facilitates uh, the students' learning. And so um, uh, I just going to underscore a little bit the differences um, and the issues that sort of arose when we were doing this. So in the face-to-face -face class, of course, a personal contact is established in the interaction the student has with the faculty. Also, you have the student-student interaction. And the great advantage is that assignments can be spontaneously personalized. Yeah. We have, of course, Francais Interactive website. We also use, um, as far as internet is concerned, Blackboard for grades, homework assignments, and office hours also in the face-to-face -face class. So students are already familiar with these online resources. So when we moved to the synchronous online class, um, we were at least able to establish um, personal contact virtually. The faculty is able to interact with the students um, in Blackboard. Okay, we had um, Blackboard Collaborate, and um, we were able to have uh, sessions in Blackboard Collaborate. We also had our, uh, not only our classes, but also our office hours in Blackboard, and we still continue to do that now. Um, a drawback was a little bit, uh, I talked with other colleagues who are also teaching French at other institutions, even though these were synchronous classes, students often uh, prefer to not show their face when they interacted 
with faculty, um, probably because um, the personal setting they had and so often were not dressed, um, had people coming right out of the shower. I didn't want to share that. However, if we had group activities, students were willing to show their faces and interact. They felt more comfortable. Okay. Um, and uh, Francais Interactive actually proved uh, really as a great resource here because we could use, um, the students could work in groups um, using Francais Interactive and do group activities there without a problem. Sometimes it was a little bit difficult to deploy the videos into Blackboard Collaborate, so we would just put them into the chat and the students could watch them there. Um, at that time already, we also used not only um, videos that were produced by Francais Interactive. Um, some of the videos, um, we have to uh, give a little caveat here, are a little bit dated and the resolution sometimes wasn't the greatest. The great majority of them are fine, of course, and uh, especially the exam videos are always updated and they're very good quality. So we use their exam videos um, for the exams. Um, but we supplemented also already in the synchronous online class um, some of the uh, Francais Interactive videos with, um, let's say, some uh, selected YouTube videos or with little PowerPoint presentations voice over. Um, so that would be used there too. So um, last was then the asynchronous online class. So here, of course, the big challenge is to establish personal contact and make students feel comfortable to reach out to you. This is especially important for incoming freshmen who have to have this um, personal connection. So in order to uh, establish this personal connection, um, a organized always at the beginning of the semester, a synchronous online orientation session, which needs to be optional for students because they have signed up for asynchronous, but it gives the students the opportunity to um, express uh, um, like concerns they might have, uh, um, get more information, maybe meet up with other students. That's a great way also to establish contact between other members in the class. Okay. And um, another important way of establishing uh, personal contact is also evidently during oral examinations, which are given in a synchronous setting. Some, um, I, I think Karen, you do that. You allow them also to send in videos if yeah. they would like to do that to give them a little bit more flexibility. Okay, but then the important thing here is to have also personalized videos to present the material in a video. So they, as Karen already mentioned, have a way of seeing how uh, the grammar is presented, but also how things are pronounced. So they have this person uh, who is in charge of the class to interact with them. And so we had personalized Kaltura uh, videos that uh, most recently have been transferred into Juja. Uh, Angelo State has adopted Juja. We also have PowerPoint videos and then also do Blackboard Collaborate recordings. Um, the problem with Blackboard Collaborate recordings is that they are all, can only be used during one semester, then they sort of disappear um, and you have to re-record. But sometimes that's also okay because you have to adjust your videos to your student population and what worked in one semester might not work the next semester. Again, here, Francais Interactive worked really well for us. Um, because it was tailored to the student needs. And as I said in the beginning, one of the big things was we could have the students interact with us and the material right away. There was really no excuse to not 
do the assignments. And in the eight week courses is really crucial to have students do work continuously every day to not lose them. It proved to be really an excellent um, retention tool. We hardly, I mean, in the eight week courses, I hardly have any drops. Um, the people, when they start, they go on and finish up the four semester sequence. Okay, I'm gonna move on here. And, um, oops, I'm sorry. Um, I'd show you um, the eight week courses for eight to the four eight week courses we offer during the year. Um, so in the fall, we teach French 1301, 1302, and in the spring semester, 2311, 2312. Did you miss them? No, no, I was just looking to so, see what. Um, so we are following the chapters of Francais Interactive. So um, uh, I'm going to give you here my course French 2311, which I'm teaching right now and which will finish this Friday. Um, so this is the syllabus you should be able to see. Yeah, do you see that one? Yes, no? No, no not, not yet. Okay. Huh. Okay, so I guess you see it now? Yes. Okay. So um, this is also, it's uh, password protected. And so I guess that's why it's turning out to be a little, little bit more difficult. Okay. This is um, a course outline geared towards a larger population than Angelo State. And so initially um, I'm giving more detailed information, but we were asked because this is not only taught at AS use and students from other institutions can sign up to only give a chapter information and not too much detailed information. So all the detailed information I put in my notes so I can see them, um, but students can't. They actually only see chapter information. So um, what I'm going to show you is chapter nine, um, a passage from chapter nine, okay? Um, going back here to the PowerPoint. So um, the chapter nine is media and communication and um, students uh, have already practiced the vocabulary in the sequence I'm going to show you here. They have done two homework assignments and they have watched two um, vocabulary videos, Vocabulaire en Context, Gérard Kioski and Madame de Luce. So I'm going to quickly show you that one. That should, you see that one, right? This should share. You see chapter nine? Sorry? Not quite yet. It's weird. Oh. Why does it not share? We just use syllabus. Uh -huh. There you go. I think it's there now. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, when I practiced it uh, earlier on, I didn't have to do a new share for everything, but apparently now this is not. Anyways, so here they have, um, Karen did a good introduction on how this, um, um, how the chapters are organized. So they have done the vocabulary, they have watched the videos, and I'm now gonna talk about relative pronouns, okay? So that is what we will be covering here, okay? And so I'm gonna go to the next slide. So, and I'm going to show you the sample days, February 16, 17, and 20th. Okay. They, um, on 16, I'm going to go to my uh, Blackboard. There I have created a video that introduces relative pronouns, and um, they receive a homework assignment from Francais Interactive where they're practicing that. Then on 217, 
they um, are reintroduced to uh, relative pronouns, but this time it's going to be done by Alexa, someone who has put out quite a series of uh, Francais, uh, Francais grammar uh, videos. And um, so I want to encourage students to also look for other resources to um, get information about certain grammar or vocabulary points. But again, the homework assignment will be from Francais Interactif. And then the last one is the new grammar and the vocabulary practice in videos um, from the French native speakers and the children, uh, the children, sorry, about the students from uh, um, UT will be assigned. And um, then they see it in, in the Francais Interactif context. And they will also receive, receive a homework assignment from Francais Interactive. So I will now leave um, my PowerPoint uh, and hopefully be able to share with you my, um, my, uh, this is, sorry about that. No, hey. I don't want to, I need to go to, I'm so sorry. My announcement page. Um, yeah. You yeah. should be see, able to see that, right? Yes, we do. Oh, okay. So thanks. Thanks for your patience here. So here's my little video. You should be able to see my video where I'm... Hey, bonjour. Where you see... Aujourd'hui, on va parler des pronoms relatifs. Okay. And so it is important uh, to have the presentation like as if you were in the classroom, but then they can switch also to the grammar slide and look at the grammars, I get go back and forth, which is really important. Um, and in Francais Interactive, they have that a little bit, they have the presentation and then they have um, a PDF file where they also get um, uh, grammar clues or vocabulary okay here is the alexa video okay you have to be very careful about what kind of videos you're selecting from uh uh youtube um but uh, because sometimes they they have mistakes in there but alexa is a good one and so students have this as a reference and then on the 20th third uh, one they do francais interactive um activities again and watch the Francais interactive videos and um, uh, also then have a quiz over the grammar material. Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, let us know. Hey, no yeah, one. thank you. That was great. Oh, thanks. How do we get that? Sorry. Stop sharing. No. So um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to unmute and uh, directly ask your question to the professors, you. or you can um, post your question in the chat box. So I see we have a question from Amy. He says, how long did it take to move this uh, WHO this WHO thing online when COVID hit? Oh, this whole thing, I think, is what she's saying. Uh, well, we basically hit the ground running. We were required. Our university gave us how much was it? A week. A week. A week. Yeah. To um, for the synchronous um, to put the whole thing online. And I must say, our tech 
people there did a wonderful job. I mean, I just like because I happened to be in Europe at the time when it hit. My mom had just turned 100. And so I was there and stayed over there and they communicated with me all the way and helped me to set it up. Yeah, it was it was intense. But, you know, so we did, have a, we did have a week warning. Uh, but really, we were kind of creating on the fly. And again, the nice thing that you can tell, uh, uh, really, from 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 looking at how Christine is doing it, there are lots of aspects of Francais Interactif that made this fairly straightforward for us uh, in French. It was a little clunkier uh, for the Spanish courses, I have to say, because there were fewer things that were available to them online. Um, uh, but but Transient Actif was made for all of this. So um, um, we had to get up to up 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 on all of the technology part of it. But really, the materials of Transient Actif lent themselves quite quite well to that. So we have a, a long uh, post from Bridget McCarthy who says thank you and congratulations on a very impressive project. I would love to use this with our French students in Arusha, Tanzania. A few specific questions. One, is this suitable for self-directed learning? And two, most of our students don't have reliable internet. Is the textbook usable without the interactive content? Is there a link to download a full PDF of all chapters so we can distribute it? Do the PDFs contain links back to the interactive content so students can complete exercises if and when the internet is available? So uh, quite a number of questions there. Well, definitely they can download the book, no problem. Okay, and we, when we started our doing um, our French classes online, when we had to, or because of COVID, Right, a lot of our students have returned home and did not have the internet access all the time. So we have faced uh, that problem too. And sometimes you have to accommodate students and give them more time. Um, yeah, most definitely they can access the material at another time when they have internet. Um, but, but particularly because of the nature of, of French, with it not being as phonetic a language as, say, Spanish, um, uh, they really will need, reg I mean, uh, uh, good access. It does not necessarily have to be perfect access, but they would need uh, a lot of uh, access to the Internet just to hear uh, what it is that they're seeing. Uh, to make that connection, the phoneme to grapheme correspondence, which starts at the word level in that least of vocabulaire, but morphs radically once you get to sentence length utterances. And, and that's where they would really have to have uh, a lot of modeling. So yes, uh, uh, you can learn all kinds of things uh, with enough motivation, with really good materials, but ultimately you've got to have that feedback and you've got to have that connection. But I would think also that, you know, if you have the time to design some support videos and make them accessible to your students would help, you know. Um, yeah, if you have synchronous access, of course, would be probably um, nicer in the way that, uh, you know, students could interact with you immediately and ask questions. But, you know. Yeah, if the internet access is spotty, I think creating videos to support um, Jose Interactive would be definitely helpful. Yeah, thank you so much for that answer. And uh, my own internet was in a bit spotty a moment ago, so I hope uh, let me know if I'm not coming through. Um, yeah, very helpful. Um, so. I think it's what would be ideal is it sounds like um, to have an in-person class with the exercises so they get the audio feedback and then have some um, 
uh, content they can work on on their own, which is the PDF. So they might be able to take that offline. Um, I think it calls for a creative approach. And we're in a tough situation now because sadly we lost our full-time French instructor to COVID. And so oh. we're relying on volunteers, uh, which has been you know, heartening that people have agreed to do this without pay. Um, but you know, if we're, if we're able to get them once a week, then if we can maximize that once a week with the audio, <laughs> um, then, then that will leverage. And you know, the truth is I've seen some amazing, um, particularly in Africa, some amazing French teachers who don't know how to spell, but are producing fluent speakers. <laughs> Uh -huh. yes. 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 yes, and that is not uncommon at all. Again, because of the challenge uh, in French, uh, you can be uh, absolutely fluent speakers, but really uh, not not be uh, even legible writers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Actually, if you have if you have a take on that, I'm curious what you, because on the one hand, I feel like well, you know, they should be able to read, uh, but if that's, if they're looking at, you know, employment and tourism as a, the, the, the reason they're gaining the skill, then maybe, you know, is that not an important area to prioritize? Well, I mean, I, I think it's going to depend on, um, you know, what, what industry uh, they're going to go into. So if they're really doing a lot of customer service, uh, and it's the interaction that's so important, exactly yeah. how much do they have to read and write or how accurately? And again, Reading is one thing. Writing is something else. Uh, 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 but but that inter and then there's plenty of people who can read and there's not plenty. There are some people who can read and write, but whose spoken French is unintelligible uh, mm -hmm. if they can produce anything and may not be able to understand anything that that is being said to them. So there's pros and cons to to all of these things. But uh, seems to me like if there's at least a base of reading and writing, and then just really emphasize the oral communication for um, services, for example, uh, uh, then uh, okay, uh, that would at least be equipping them for a particular kind of job. Well, I yeah, would that's really interesting. That's exactly what I see too with the English learning there is that there's a really high writing ability and reading ability and really low speaking ability. Um, and, and, you know, that's what they want to get is the speaking ability. So I'm really impressed too by your approach of actually including non-native speakers and more informals. I think that's just the perfect fit for, um, you know, I don't know if you've had others in Africa use the book, but it sure would be interesting to get in touch with any of them using it in that context. And, and I don't, I don't really know since I, I've just been a part of the project. I've not been in charge in any, in any stretch of the imagination. But uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, that would be an interesting question for Carl Blythe and some of the team who really did create all of these materials. They are in touch with a lot of people through COERL, that Center for Open Educational Resources in Language Learning. They're liable to know who in Africa, are there people in Africa who are using these materials? Yeah, uh, so that's no, a good look question. at it. You might contact Carl Blythe. Uh, you might contact uh, uh, him. Uh, he's on that COERL website. If you'll go in there, uh, then you might contact him at UT, uh, um, Blythe, B-L-Y-T-H, uh, and see what he knows about all of that. Yeah, that would yeah, be Thank you so much. And congratulations again. Very impressive. I was looking at it. I, I stumbled into this webinar for a wee week, but I was actually looking at your um, curriculum before. So very well, uh, well met. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Do we have other questions for Drs. Moosh and Cody? Again, feel free to unmute or post your question in the chat box. Going once, going twice. Okay, nobody has any further questions. Um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Cody and Dr. Moosh for uh, a great presentation. We enjoyed uh, 
having you here this morning as part of our um, Open Educational Resources Conference. And um, we appreciate everybody being here and um, looking forward to seeing everybody uh, at the, um, the next uh, sessions coming up. Thank you. It was really a thank, pleasure. Yeah, thank you all for being here. Thank you for hosting us. It was really nice to be able to talk about our program. And um, if you wanted to put our email into the chat, if they have any questions later on, we'd be happy to answer those. Great idea. Um, um, I, I will do that. Yeah, give me just a second. Okay, Perfect. Great. I was going to say, Sabrina has that. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Bye. I'll include your emails um, when I send out an announcement about the recording so everyone who registered will get. Okay, that's that, great. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for all your help. Yeah, really of course. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks again. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.